back to Luna. So we're gonna talk about Obi oh. and his health and how I saved his life using natural remedies. He was attacked by a pit bull. He's had digestive issues. He ran into a fence. Come here, puppy. Let's show them your scar. He's getting angry, I think, because I'm talking about him. Anyways, stay tuned for more. We're gonna get into all of it. So Obi's on a timeout because he's misbehaving. But in early March, he was on a pack walk. So he's part of a puppy pack. They go on Easy. walks three times a week. Easy. And one day I get a call from the pack walker and she says, something happened. Obi's fine now, but he was attacked by a pit bull, another member of his pack. And I was like, what? There's a pit bull in his pack? I didn't even know that when I signed him up and he attacked him. What the heck happened? So they were walking. They were near a loud place. So they're walking on the sidewalk, but there were loud cars. The loud cars startled Obi. Obi had a reaction. The pit bull had a reaction to that and he attacked Obi. Very odd. And, um, and Obi has a scar now on the back of his paw and then even on the front of his paw. And the scar is still there. It was happened in March and it's still there. And I tried everything to get him to come back to, to his normal self. So after that happened, he was on antibiotics. He was on painkillers and that totally messed up his gut. The painkillers were helpful, but you know, he was, he was in pain a little bit, you know, dogs experience pain differently than humans, but it was the, the antibiotics that really messed up his digestive system. And so he actually was starting to show signs of weird indigestion. We didn't know what they were at first, but he um, had a big scare the next week with what we thought could potentially be food bloat. So dogs like him that have that body style have a narrow little rib cage and the belly is in the top of that part of the rib cage. And if the stomach bloats due to food or allergies or whatever, cuts off the circulation to their heart, to their vital organs, to their lungs, and they could die instantly, like really quickly. So it's a scary thing. Went to the emergency room. He spent 10 hours at the hospital that day. They pumped him full of IV liquids. They were monitoring him to make sure he didn't bloat. And after that, he came back from the hospital. He was totally fine. We were monitoring his food, monitoring his bowel movements. And he seemed to have a full recovery at that point. The symptoms of food bloat are, he was licking the air incessantly, nonstop. He was eating a ton of grass, nonstop, like to the point where you had to like pull him away from the grass to get him out of there. He just, that's all he wanted to eat. No drinking water, um, couldn't really eat food, and he wasn't going to the bathroom as much as he should have. And when he did, he would just poop out grass, which was so painful for him. It was like, you know, he was crying of pain. But um, the other thing was he was uh, gagging. So the gagging was really confusing because it was like nothing was coming out. He was just gagging. And he had made this same gagging almost like a vomiting for weeks after what turns out the pack walk incident. And he was doing this like retching and what it was, it turns out, so this I learned after changing his diet, emergency room again. So emergency room once with a food bloat scare and then again, and then both, you know, digestion related. It turns out that he has acid reflux. And that was like a really hard thing to learn um, because no one at the hospitals or clinics even mentioned that. Like when we came in for food blow and they're like, oh, he's fine. It's not food blow. It might be X, Y, or Z. They didn't say it might be X, Y, or Z. They just said, it's not food blow. He's fine. Just watch him. So between the pack walk, the first food blow and the emergency room, and then um, another incident with 
the emergency room and potential food blow, I had been experimenting with his diet because a lot of these things that we are troubled with our pets relate to the food we give them. Behavioral issues can be cleared with diet, um, digestion, skin, allergies, it all comes back to food. No surprise, right? So we've been giving him turkey, turkey, chicken, sardines, rice, veggie puree, and chicken broth in much smaller portion sizes to ensure that food bloat wasn't a thing, right? Um, and then we hadn't been feeding him until he eliminated from the, the previous meal. So lots of monitoring. This is like between March and April. On April 19th, I took him to the emergency room again because it turns out not only was it not food, food bloat this time, but he had been allergic to chicken. Again, no one at the freaking hospitals said that to us. I had to learn the hard way. So got rid of chicken, poultry in general, and put him on actually a prescription diet. And the other thing that is so important to know about animals that have digestive issues, which are probably all of them, and that have um, the narrow rib cage and that have acid reflux. So the reason the acid reflux happens is because this canine, animals, dogs, are meant to have uh, primarily meat. They're carnivores. So they're supposed to have not only just the protein part of the meat, you know, they're supposed to eat the bones. They're supposed to eat the organs. They're supposed to eat everything, the intestines. Their digestive enzymes in their body are meant to break down a full animal, like a full cow. And because, you know, here in America, in the Western world, we're just used to like kibble and this and this and this, which actually is not a bad thing if it has great ingredients. So what I learned is, um, you know, we had been cooking his, his chicken and just giving him chicken like breasts and legs and, and that kind of thing. And then a veggie puree, but it wasn't enough to keep the acidity down in his body. So the prescription foods and the foods that are made well for dogs have the ability to keep their acid down, meaning because they're not meant to um, process and have the digestive enzymes for like carbs, veggies, etc. cetera. Um, the way that these are formulated have a special recipe whereby it keeps their stomach acid down and it gives them what they need. So it's actually quite, um, quite informative. And the minute I put him on a canned food prescription diet, he was, he was great. Um, the ingredients weren't amazing, but I was desperate. So I had to do that for, for like a couple of weeks. Um, keep in mind though, even with that diet change, he had a lot of improvements in his skin. Like, um, he was like itching himself a lot because of the allergy to chicken. So he had a lot of improvements in his skin, but he was still retching. Um, so what I learned is that all of that physical stuff is great, but dogs also have emotional intelligence and an emotional body. And this little Obi was processing, you know, being in a pack and then getting attacked by his buddy. Imagine you're like in kindergarten and then your buddy attacks you and like leaves a giant scar. How could you not have any kind of, you know, emotional trauma? So what I did for that and what I actually helped his retching and other things, OB was um, homeopathics. That literally saved his emotional self. He wants to come in now. That actually was the thing that changed his behavior, changed the retching, changed his frequency, really, his energetic signature so that he could feel confident and comfortable and um, acid reflux went away. Like, it's amazing because dogs experience the world kind of through our filter in many ways. So like if an accident happens, of course, there's bound to be trauma and there's repercussions because of that. So here he is <laughs> doing so much better. Um, funnily enough, there's more. <laughs> he, um, he ate two pounds of seasoned ground beef. Here's my list. Had a huge accident at the dog park. This was in early June. He ran into a fence while running full speed. 
Come here, baby. Let's show them your scar. Come on. He has a massive scar on this side. It's going to be difficult to show, but um, he ran into a fence. It ripped open his body and he was laying on the grass and he looked up at me like, hey, what's going on? Like, wanted to continue playing. He didn't even flinch. And then I'm like, oh, oh my God. And I look at it and it's massive. And he had to have 14 staples to put him back together. <laughs> Poor thing. He was given this crazy drug. It's a drug that they use to calm them down before an anesthetic. And it makes them feel like they're out of their body and then they come back in and they don't know what's going on. Um, so he was crying for 24 hours and it was gnarly. Um, again, that was the emergency room. So whenever you go to the emergency vet, just really be, be diligent with what they do with your pet. The last thing with Obi recently, he had a vasectomy and we chose that option instead of a neutering because of many reasons. So there's a ton of studies and I'll link to them in the description box that find that sterilization of any kind increases lifespan, but when it's a neuter, they can actually risk getting infectious diseases and it increases their risk of death from cancer. So there's an amazing study I'll link there. Um, also, male dogs that are neutered before 12 months of age have a double risk of hip dysplasia with then their um, intact counterparts. This is a study on golden retrievers from 2013. And even like dogs sterilized before the age of six months have a 70% increased risk of de developing hip dysplasia, which is so common for these, these guys, especially the athletic ones. Um, so the advice that I'm hearing from a lot of other pet owners and veterinarians is like, wait, wait to sterilize your pet. The longer you wait, the better in many cases for many breeds. Of course, talk to your vet, call a holistic vet. That's what we use. Um, talk to other dog owners, talk to other breed owners that you know, because um, it's pretty important and it can really change their life. Um, some other things that's really interesting. So, behavior can change when you decide to neuter your dog so it could be like they become more fearful they have more separation anxiety their fear of noises they're more aggressive um they do all those things and you know oftentimes many will notice too like because we're cutting off a part of the body that has hormones like pretty critical hormones the rest of their hormonal system is off um, they might be a little more docile, yes, because, you know, their reproductive organs are gone. So, like, they may not want to hump you or pee on everything. But I think, you know, decreasing a risk of cancer and, like, keeping his body parts and keeping him, you know, you know, a vasectomy means he cannot impregnate another dog. But it also adds more years to his life in the long run. So to me, it's more important for him to have a higher quality of life. Yes, he's still peeing on things. Yes, he's still humping things, but like, you know, he's a dog. <laughs> there's only there's only so much we can tame from tame him, you know? So he's a wild animal that's living in our world and <sighs> he's domesticated-ish, but um, that's Obi. So he's here with us. He's been through a lot, but um, holistic wellness works for, for puppies too. And um, I think that he's been through all that he's meant to go through. And now he's an adult doggy. Not every dog goes through these things, but he's done gone through a lot as a puppy. Um, but as you can see, he's a very healthy guy. And he's happy. He lives a good life. And that's all. So I welcome all of your questions and comments. And, um, you know, he's a special breed. He's a Catahoula. So he's got Hound and Mastiff. And if you have a dog that's similar to that, you know, this is great advice that you can take and use. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Please like, subscribe, and um please leave comments if there are any other videos 
about dogs, specifically dog, dog topics. Like we have a cool food protocol for him. Um, I've done a ton of research on raw food and that's what basically he's doing now. Um, anyhow, happy to share. Thanks for being here. Got my hair tie, loves these things. Oh look, and now he's trying to hump me. <laughs> um, let go. Leave it. <laughs>